like to uh, welcome everyone to uh, the press and publicity launch of the uh, No to EU campaign for the South West. Uh, I believe this is a historic occasion, uh, the June European elections, because this is the first time uh, that a trade union has backed a slate nationwide in every constituency in this country uh, against the Labour Party candidates. We're faced with parties that represent basically the same thing. What do they represent? They represent the wealthy, the powerful, the rich in our society, the owners of industry, the rich bankers. The main vehicles for pushing forward the neoliberal agenda has been the European common market and more, more recently the European Union. What we're pleased to say today is that we've managed to collect around us some of the best working class fighters in Britain today. So standing on the no to eu list in London there's Kevin Nolan, um, in the, uh, in, in, in the East Midlands, uh, we have uh, John McEwen, uh, one of the members of the strike committee at the Lindsay Oil Refinery, uh, who took action over Christmas uh, that people will remember. Uh, in uh, the West Midlands, uh, the list is headed up by Dave Nellist, uh, the former MP for Coventry, who's been the Socialist Party candidate, uh, councillor, excuse me, uh, in, uh, in Coventry for uh, the last uh, 10 to 15 years. Uh, but we've also got uh, leading conveners uh, from the construction sector, uh, the leading convener from the uh, Stratford Olympic building site, uh, Owen Morris, is standing on our list in the southeast of England. And we've got leading trade unionists uh, up and down the country uh, who are backing this campaign. It's not a top down campaign. <coughs> Refer to the issue of public services one more time. As a railway worker, as a, a union that organises transport workers, we've been very aware uh, of the politics <coughs> of the European Union because they have formed a framework uh, for the privatisation of railways and railway services in this country. As a teacher in Bristol, where we have the most academies in the UK, we've seen the devastating <coughs> impact of academies, where we see these bright, fantastic schools that open, but actually the impact on the students who are working there is very limited, and they're not making progress, they're not developing, they're not moving forward. And it's an example of how the private sector is taking something that we fought really hard for and destroying it and breaking it up and selling it for profit. And when people are running something for profit, it's not, you know, sorry, I'm not getting a bit cross. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, when, pe when something's being run for profit, basically it's not being run for the people who are having that service. So you're trying to do the, the least that you can do and make the most money out of it. So, you know, why are our schools being run like that? Why are our hospitals being run like that? That's absolutely ridiculous. I have the same goal. I, you know, I work in the health service, and um, even in the health service, I mean, not that this government needs any encouragement in terms of privatisation, but in the last few years we've seen wave after wave of privatisation hit the uh, NHS, and the latest privatisation, by the way, trans community services could potentially privatise the, provi the provision of care outside of acute hospitals. But even there, in, in, the European, in, in the European Union, we have directives now which are opening up, uh, opening up the health service for private companies to exploit, opening up the health service to the forces of, of marketization and privatization. When we say no to EU, I want to make it quite clear. We're not opposed to European workers. We are an outward-looking internationalist trade union, and this campaign, it, at its core, at its core, is about saying that workers from whatever country they come should have the same rights, the same entitlements, the same rates of pay, and the same access uh, to legal uh, services. By giving a socialist alternative, a real alternative, we can undermine the, that growth of the BNP. We can show that the working class people, that there are people ready to, to, to stand up for them, ready to represent their interests. And, and an alternative, basically, to these free parties and also these right, this sort of um, sweetened, candified BMP that we're seeing at the moment. Uh, at all yet tonight is the critical issue uh, about the Lisbon Treaty. Um, the European Union Constitution uh, in its renamed, rehashed form, uh, the Lisbon Treaty, was defeated in referendums both in France uh, and in the Netherlands in 2005. At September, in September 2005 at the TUC Congress, my union took, up, took a resolution which committed the TUC also to oppose a European Union constitution because it was a constitution that embedded Thatcherite economics into a constitutional settlement for a new superstate in Europe. 
after the defeat of that constitution by the French and Dutch voters, the leaders, the political elites of Europe have gone away for what Jack Straw termed a period of reflection and have come back two years later with a rehashed, renamed treaty, which is the same European Union constitution, this time called the Lisbon Treaty. But this time, they're making sure that we don't get a sniff of a vote on it. And that's a disgrace, because the only people in Europe who have been allowed to vote on the Lisbon Treaty, the people of the Republic of Ireland, uh, have given their verdict and have defeated it uh, in a bitterly fought campaign where the uh, voices of the trade unions and those campaigning for a no vote were outfinanced uh, and uh, outpublicised by the media elites and the political elites of Ireland telling Irish voters to vote yes if they knew what was good for them. And because the Irish had to fight for their independence uh, in their history, they knew that they weren't going to accept being lectured to by what is a proto-imperialist state uh, emerging in the, through the European Union. And they voted no. And we all know what's happened. They've now been told they gave the wrong answer, and they've got to go back and vote again this October. Well, we think that story needs to be told in these elections. These are European elections. Let's talk about European politics. Let's talk about the undemocratic contempt uh, that the leaders of the European Union have for the views of the people of Ireland, the people of the Netherlands, the people of France, and the people of every single member state. And say to people, working class people, who are sick to the stomach with the policies of privatisation of the post office uh, that are being pursued by this government, there is a decent alternative you can vote for. You don't have to vote fascist. You don't have to vote BNP. Uh, let's get the message out there that there is a way that you can oppose the policies of neoliberalism being pursued by this government uh, and which are copied by all of the mainstream political parties in this country uh, and let's start a movement of resistance to these policies here today and let's take it forward after the 4th of June. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, we'll take any questions that you want to ask us and I hope that we can do some good work together over the next month.